How can embedded in, embedding digital learning platforms in the GCSE Mass Research Curriculum impact learner participation and engagement? By Molly Markland and Kai Stengel. So why this topic? So we worked really hard during COVID to upskill and develop our digital skills and we didn't want to lose these skills and wanted to continue using them in the classroom when we returned to in-person teaching. It came clear very quickly that learners were using their phones in class for social purposes and were finding it extremely difficult to stay off their phones for 90 minutes considering most of them have spent 18 months using their phone to complete their online learning classes. <coughs> Mass anxiety in COVID uh, had a massive impact on their confidence levels and learners were reluctant to engage in classroom activities. This made it difficult for tutors to provide support. If the learners were not engaged in the sessions and not completing any work and not providing any answers, it made it impossible to identify starting points and areas for improvement. So in the first cycle, we had a look at the issues and we looked at um, the fact that learners were reluctant to provide verbal answers in class. There's a lot of anxiety, confidence issues, students didn't know each other and they were frightened of getting the answers wrong. Learners were not asking staff for help if they were unsure of a topic. Again, this is due to anxiety, confidence issues and they didn't want to be seen as not being able to do it in front of others in the group. Which again made it difficult for tutors to provide support. It was, was made it difficult to identify skills gaps because there was no engagement from the learners and learners would often disclose things at the end of the session rather than during, so it made it difficult to support students. So the action we took is we implemented Nearpod, which is a digital learning platform within the sessions for a couple of weeks um, and included an introductory session on how to use the platform. Then we asked the learners about their opinion around the platform through an anonymous questionnaire Forms questionnaire was sent out to the group and we had 56 responses all together. There was not a huge number of responses, although it was still very insightful. We also conducted a focus group with a group of Year 10 homeschooled learners. There were seven in the group. It was a good group to choose because they were very anxious learners. They had good attendance to the sessions and it was a small group, so it was easier to facilitate. The discussion was recorded and transcribed and we did a thematic analysis to pull out key themes and quotes and the data is included in the write-up report. So this is an example of Nearpod and what it looks like and the draw feature at the bottom lets students submit their answers privately, use different colours to highlight different parts of information and just to write all over the screen. Uh, this made it easy for tutors to see individual slides on the screen and it was easy to identify who doesn't understand quickly and discreetly. Uh, the results from the first cycle is that we realise that Nearpod is working for improving vocal participation in the session. Students are engaging with activities, even if it's to say that they don't understand the topic, they were getting involved. This made it easier for tutors to identify whether someone was struggling with a topic and if they needed help or if there was another issue like behaviour or stretch and, stretch and challenge. However, we did quickly realise that Nearpod was not working for LOTC and students were just reluctant to do any work outside the classroom on Nearpod. And this is from downloading the session reports. Uh, we noticed that a lot of them were not doing the activities outside of the classroom. It was good for if the students had missed a lesson, but it, it because there was no new content in the Nearpod activities, students wouldn't have done it if they were attended the lesson. So then what we went on to is we had a look at other digital learning platforms to support LOTC and we also provided learners with digital resources that underpin the topics covered within the classroom. So we had a look at different um, digital platforms such as Corbett Maths and Dr Frost, which was good for providing feedback and exam style questions. So it was an extension on what we did with Nearpod. Okay, so at cycle two, um, we did realise that learners were only using Nearpod in class and not using the, outs the platform outside the classroom. Um, and we decided this after downloading all the session reports. Uh, we'd also noticed that students were sending Teams messages uh, at unsociable hours asking for help. Um, and this is where we recognised that our learners were regularly working at all hours of the day and did not have a set routine. 
We recognised as staff that we needed a healthy work-life balance and could not be available at all hours to help the learners. However, we still wanted to, them to continue asking questions and to continue making progress and we realised that feedback was essential for this. Um, we'd also noticed that learners were reluctant to complete any exam style questions uh, that were provided on a paper handout. Um, so uh, lost work seemed to be uncool taking homework home, uh, students didn't have bags, uh, often sheets were found uh, in the bin as well. Uh, or students just forgot to bring it back again. So what we decided to do was we decided to introduce Dr. Frost uh, to mirror the Nearpod content covered in the lessons. Um, we set up all the learners on the platform and did an introductory session on using the platform. We also signposted learners um, to Corbett uh, and Dr. Frost explanation videos that were accessible at all times. Uh, if we were unavailable, um, these were helpful for the learners, so hopefully they could understand what they were needed to do. Uh, regards to providing learners with digital handouts to complete the exam style questions, uh, this was better and easier uh, because it eliminated any excuses from the learners around losing the worksheets. It also enabled the tutors to provide the feedback electronically and created a back and forth conversation with our learners. Um, tutors were also able to provide feedback based specifically on the exam side questions that the learners had completed uh, for that session. Um, we also conducted a uh, forum with a group of learners uh, and this forum was conducted with a group of eight health and social care learners. The group uh, varied in confidence and academic abilities and some learners struggled with their social interactions. This group was also chosen after looking at their progress on Dr. Frost because it was clear that some learners used the platform regularly. However, some had hardly logged in, had hardly logged onto the platform at all. This then gave a diverse opinion on the digital learning platform. The forum was recorded, transcribed, and a thematic analysis was conducted to pull out key themes. Okay. We noticed that by using Dr. Frost, the LLTC improved and learners were submitting work for feedback. Um, we also noticed that learners were accessing the materials on the go. And again, we were able to download session reports um, and be able to sort of uh, generate individual learning plans. Um, Our recommendations are that we design and implement a curriculum that includes a digital technology for in-class delivery and for working outside the classroom, but we also do recognise that money does need to be invested into developing IT uh, infrastructure.